Today's video is brought to you by HelloTushy.com. Hey, brother! Well, guys, as ever, just as soon as you think you know what's going on in WandaVision, the show expands ah. and throws you a few more curveballs. It's an oversimplification of events, but yes. Like, remember when we saw Super Creepy Dead Vision and thought, oh my gosh, is she reanimating his dead body? And then a week later, we learn, ah, yeah, she did steal his corpse. Yikes. Except then this week we saw her have a similar vision about dead Pietro, but now he's in the wrong body? So, wait, why? Does that mean he, uh, is this Pietro actually alive? Was that vision actually dead? Then on top of those mysteries, Monica is clearly getting powers, having gone through the hex twice now, but the hex also just expanded and hit a ton of other people. So now are they going to get powers too? And if so, what are they going to be called? Like the, the hex men? <laughs> Wait, Ugh. yeah. So there was a lot to unpack this week, but at the bottom of it all, I think we found the show's big secret. And that is that there are actually two ones. Guys, before we dive on in, we need to give a huge thank you to today's sponsor, HelloTushy.com. Listen up, everyone, it's 2021, and you know what they say, new rear, new you. Everyone always aims really high with their New Year's resolutions and game-changing perspectives on their world. But me, I got a bidet. For real though, guys, I'm not sure I've ever talked to more people about my toilet ever. But hey, if you had the brand new Hello Tushy 3.0 modern bidet attachment, <laughs> I think you would be too. I mean, it's stylish, eco-friendly, easy to install, and affordable. Now, bidets have actually been around forever, but they've also been hideously expensive to install, and normally you gotta call the plumber, and there's all this extra setup, and blah, who needs it? But not the Hello Tushy bidet. It attaches right onto your existing toilet and requires no additional plumbing or electricity, and it cuts down on toilet paper usage by 80%. Plus, every Hello Tushy bidet attachment comes with a 60D wrist risk-free guarantee and a 12-month warranty. Trust me, guys, this is one of those I'll never go back kind of improvements you can make to your life. But if you'd like to check it out for yourself, you can head over to hellotushy.com slash super to get 10% off your order plus free shipping. Again, this is a special offer just for our viewers. Head to hellotushy.com slash super for 10% off and free shipping. That is hellotushy.com slash super for 10% off. Link is in the description down below. All right, where to begin? Where to begin? Let's start with director Hayward and whatever it is he's up to. While he's obviously been something of an antagonist thus far, this episode really starts to make it clear what his actual motives are. Namely, to create weapons by studying Vision's body. I mean, it's been pretty clear up to this point that despite all the hostages in town and Monica's direct reports that Wanda is in terrible pain that he has really no concern about any of that whatsoever. I mean, the moment they finally get a drone through the hex and get within the firing range of Wanda, he immediately orders her dead. Take the shot. What? Take the shot. Which of course does nothing but anger the heck out of Wanda, who emerges from the hex, dragging said drone and yelling at them with her old accent fully intact. You don't bother me. I won't bother you. Then in this episode, Darcy also hacks through Hayward's firewalls and discovers that he isn't even tracking Wanda. He's only tracking vision. In fact, look how the label reads when the GPS relocates him. It says, asset reattained. And while it might be really easy to just overlook this as GPS location jargon, I also think it is an actual hint to us, the audience, that Hayward is trying to literally reattain this asset for weapons production. Which should really come as no surprise. It's actually one of the very first things Monica notes about the changes at S.W.O.R.D. after she comes back. Sentient weapons, like it says on the door. It also says observation and response on that door, not creation. The world's not the same as you left it. The really sneaky thing he's doing though is using Wanda's theft of Vision's body as proof that she is breaking the terms of Vision's will. He didn't want to be anybody's weapon. Maximoff, in her grief, 
disregarded his wishes. When it is also just as plausible to me, if not more so, that Wanda is breaking in because she found out that S.W.O.R.D. is doing that exact same thing. Although, technically, it seems like what they're trying to do is exploit a loophole because as Will says that he doesn't want his body used as a weapon, but so I think what they're doing is studying his body to make very similar weapons. The really big hint though is the name of the secret project, which is Project Cataracts, which is indeed a very clever name because if you don't know, cataracts is an eye condition that causes you to see double. Get it? Double vision. Project Cataracts is about making a double of vision. <laughs> hilarious and notably dangerous. Why is he doing this though, you might ask? Well, specifically to kill super powered people. Thus far, he has made it very clear how difficult life was for him after the snap. All you people who left still have the luxury of optimism. You have no idea what it was like. Which like, you know, okay. That's fair. But he also very quickly characterizes Wanda as a terrorist and dismisses Monica for sympathizing with superpowered people. Captain Rambo, you have become an impediment to this mission. Constantly advocating on behalf of superpowered individuals. And just to reiterate, he already uh, ordered a kill strike on Wanda. But the real nail in the coffin for me was actually this little Easter egg right here showing the movies playing at the Corona, one of which is the Incredibles. My first thought when I saw this was that it was just yet another Fantastic Four Easter egg. I mean, we're already pretty sure Monica's friend, the astrophysicist, is going to end up being Reed Richards. And the Incredibles mirror the Fantastic Four's powers almost perfectly, just swapping out Dash for the Human Torch. Although, honestly, I think Jack-Jack's got that covered. Also, the name Samwellman on this gravestone that Pietro falls into is a reference to the second unit director from the Fantastic Four movies. On the other hand, though, I also asked myself, what is The Incredibles about? It is about a super-powered family fighting against a guy who built a sentient weapon because he hates superheroes. Yeah, so Hayward is basically syndrome, but while that sinks in, let me direct your attention to the other movie listed as playing at the Corona because man, did it really click some things into place for me. The other movie is The Parent Trap, which if you haven't seen, then for shame, that is your homework. You, you have to go watch it tonight, I'm sorry. We don't normally do a lot of homework on this show, but in this case, I think I think it's important. But as a refresher and spoilers, and because I know some of you aren't gonna do the homework, here's what it's about. The Parent Trap tells the story of two twin girls who are separated at birth. One goes with the mother, one goes with the father. Neither is aware of the existence of the other until one fateful summer when they finally meet at summer camp and decide to switch places as part of an elaborate ruse to trick their parents into getting back together. It's an oversimplification of events, but Yes. It is truly cinema gold, you guys, and features a young Lindsay Lohan playing the role of both twins. In a separate but unrelated irony, Elizabeth Olsen actually has twin sisters who starred as a single character in a sitcom which was then parodied by WandaVision a couple of weeks ago, so. Now the fact that The Parent Trap is one of the movies playing in WandaVision is obviously an Easter egg, but an Easter egg for what? And like, on a very base level, yeah, Wanda is a twin, she has twins, the parent trap is about twins, there you go. But oh my goodness, you guys, does everything in this show have such careful consideration and like layers upon layers of meaning, and I don't think that this title is any exception. The parent trap is about two girls switching places and nobody noticing. Which brings me to the big secret of this show, which is that there are two Wandas, and we keep seeing both of them, but nobody's noticing. And I dare say they have literally gone as far as to let Wanda say it out loud. I'm a twin. And do you see the brilliance? You don't think twice about this line because you know it's true that Wanda actually did have a twin brother, Pietro. And that's all she's talking about right here, right? No. Layers, you guys, layers, cakes, parfaits, onions, ogres. Now, when I say there are two Wandas, it's possible there are physically two of them walking around, but I think equally, if not more possible, that it's two Wandas living in one head. After all, the two twins from the parent trap, whilst they appear as different characters, are actually still just one Lindsay Lohan. 
I think the first huge hint we got about this was when Wanda emerged from the hex to go yell at Hayward and suddenly her accent was just back. I mean, we haven't heard it in a few movies and now it's suddenly back and she seems like way more aggressive than we've ever seen her before too. Now, sure, maybe she's just not needing to hide it anymore because she's no longer in hiding with Cap, which is why she initially decided to mask the accent. But also, maybe it's just a completely different person. Even Pietro brings it up as something suspicious, although Wanda just sends it right back at him. What happened to your accent? What happened to yours? Another clue is right here, when we can see Wanda stealing the body. Look at her clothes. They seem very everyday, just like some kind of pullover. And yet, when she emerges from the hex, she is in full trench coat. And while I agree, changing her clothes seems like no big deal for her particular set of powers, but the fact is, they are different. Different clothes because a different personality is in charge. In fact, I think whenever you see her eyes go red, that's the other personality taking charge. That's the more aggressive one that's expanding the hex and took down the drone. But if there are two Wandas, then of course the big question is, where did the other one come from? Well, great question, but believe it or not, I think we have already seen her, right? here. Okay, so throughout the episode, it is revealed a few times that Wanda and Pietro have different memories of their childhood, and on one occasion, we actually even get to see a flashback from Pietro's perspective where the two receive a fish as a trick-or-treating trick on Halloween. Or, or treat, I guess, depending on uh, how much you like fish. Wanda is clearly seen standing right next to him, and yet, in the present, she can't remember it. That's not exactly how I remember it. You probably suppressed a lot of the trauma. Which would add up because the reason they don't have the same memories is because we already know that this Pietro is actually a whole second Pietro from the X-Men universe. The obvious issue though is that Wanda isn't in the X-Men movies. When we meet Pietro or Peter in those movies, he does have a sister, but she's in like one scene and a baby and obviously not his twin. But then who is this? Well, the other thing about the X-Men movies is that when we meet Pietro, it's as a young adult, not as a small child like we see in this flashback, which leaves the door open for something to have happened to his twin in that universe long before Charles and Logan show up at his door. And yes, I know that's vague, but it continues to add up. For example, Pietro has memories of his little sister having powers. It's a pretty big leap from giving people nightmares and shooting red wiggly woos out of your hands. But our Wanda wouldn't have had powers when she was a little girl. Wanda asks him about his accent, but this Pietro never would have had one because he grew up in America. And what about the vision of dead Pietro? Why was it X-Men Pietro's body, but the bullet wounds from Avengers Pietro? Because there are two Wandas in that head. The other Wanda remembers Pietro differently and our Wanda is projecting her memories onto the new Pietro's body. Or else it actually is her dead brother's body and also his appearance has changed, but I don't think that's it because the bullet wounds look a little too fresh. Plus, it's been like literally years and I think his body would have decayed a little bit more. Two Wandas also helps explain why Wanda doesn't quite know how this got started, like why they're there. I don't know how any of this started in the first place. Wanda also thinks it's crazy that Vision thinks she is controlling everybody, getting them to the dentist and walking their dogs and stuff. Tell me Do why. You really think that I am controlling everything. And yet other characters seem pretty aware that it is Wanda controlling them because they can hear her voice, which I'm sure they can. What's the first thing you do remember? Wanda's voice. So how can it be Wanda, but also not be Wanda? Because there's two. There's also this line from the trailer about how Wanda and Vision are gonna fight for their town. This is our home. Then let's fight for it. But. Who are they fighting? Well, if there ends up being two Wandas and two Visions, it's not not like Marvel to have their heroes fight foes with exact or similar power sets. It's an oversimplification of events, but yes. The real question though would be why? Like what is other Wanda's motivation? And honestly, I don't know, to just live a normal life? Maybe? Or maybe she wants to die. There is this quote from Ultron. Everyone creates the thing they dread. People create smaller people. Uh, children designed to supplant them, to help them 
hand. At this point, she has literally created children with matching power sets to her and her brother. So maybe she could finally die and just escape all this pain and grief that she's been through. I mean, you could easily interpret that creepy yogurt commercial as the kids feeding off of her magic and when it's all gone, she'll die or else that they will die if they can't feed off the magic anymore. Like say if they go past Ellis Avenue, which by the way, it totally seemed like the further you physically got from Wanda, the more people were just like set pieces and she couldn't quite make them do the same stuff anymore. Like there are limits to her power. That being said though, she goes ahead and increases the range of people she's gonna need to control by expanding the hex by a massive margin as well. Which by the way, if she made that thing grow once, I think that is setting a precedent for it growing again. The only question is how big? And I have my money on the whole earth. I mean, by the end of the show, I'm thinking we're caught up with the present. So if it hits more people, they won't need to like transform into clowns like they did at the end of this episode. And I also feel pretty sure that the show is gonna end with the hex being defeated and dissipating. But if it hits everyone on the planet, well, I doubt everyone gets superpowers, but maybe a very select few will have a certain X gene or something get mutated. I mean, who knows? I actually really like that idea because in House of M, which WandaVision is drawing heavily from in the comics, it ends with Wanda like wiping out like 80% of the mutants on the planet. So this would be a fun like inversion of that where she actually creates all of the mutants on the planet. And if you ask me, it would also be a really cool way to introduce mutants into the universe in a way that doesn't have all of us asking like, why, why didn't they help out in Infinity War? But there you go, guys. That is our theory for two Wandas one body parent trap style. Sort of. But Ben, my question for you and everyone else is what do you think are there two Wandas? Will there be two visions? Let me know all of your thoughts in the towel section down below. Also, don't forget last week we launched the video version of our podcast, Popcorn Culture, right here on the Super Carlin Brothers main channel. Another episode will be coming out this Friday and every Friday going forward. So tune in and check it out. But guys, thanks as always for watching today's video. Don't forget to leave a like on it if you haven't already and subscribe so you don't miss any future Marvel Marvel action from us. If you want to see if Sam's new shield is going to have like superpowers or something, you can check out this video right here. Don't forget to subscribe by clicking right down here. And here's a clip from popcorn culture. I don't know how this works. And I was like, you know, so I'm like sitting there, like, you know, standing with freezing cold hands, spitting on my hands, <laughs> rubbing just, my chest. It sounds like a joke. <laughs> no, have you tried spitting on your hands? No. <laughs> Try it. Okay, what now? Nothing. <laughs> uh, nothing. Was it a joke? Was no, I don't think so. Okay. No.